I found yet one more repair job that I need to do on my heavy 10 inch uh, South Bend lathe. I started to do a, a job here uh, with my collet attachment and I realized as, as I started to install the collet that the key in the nose piece here or the collet adapter is uh, worn or, or missing or broken off or whatever but there's virtually no key left and I had two of these and I looked into the other one and it wasn't really any better so this is a job I'm going to have to tackle it's kind of a, a small piece and I think it's going to be tedious but let's take a look at how I'm going to do this now there should be a square key right here and you can see there's nothing left here. It's been uh, stripped off. It's, it's uh, flush with the surface. But if you look on the other side, you'll see where it gets uh, pressed in, but it's pressed in from the inside. So the first thing I'm going to do is knock that out with a pin punch. And uh, remember that this piece is hardened, and so is the piece that I'm going to knock out. So this little key is round on one end and square on the other and the overall size of it is very small very short so let's take it out see what we got left and measure it well I knocked it out it was in there pretty tight and this is all that was left there's no square part left at all that's just uh, uh, the round part and I already miked it and then I measured the hole this is an eighth inch bit and the eighth inch just fits in there just barely so we know this is an eighth inch hole so I got one dimension already I took a caliper and I checked the width of the keyway on uh, several collets and they're not all exactly the same this one's a little bit over 120 I think it's 122 but on average they're about 120 so that'll be the width of the slot and the depth of the slot checking with this came to about uh, 45 thousandths and uh, you know that isn't very much so the entire uh, size of this piece is, is, is actually very tiny so I am wearing my optivisor and uh, this is going to be a strain on my eyes and I'm going to make two of these and it will, will be made of uh, tool steel which is what I'm going to use is quarter inch diameter water hardening drill rod which is tool steel and when the whole job is done I'm going to harden and temper it. I took about 10 minutes to make a mock-up of what I'm going to make and, uh, and uh, this is made of aluminum and what I did is put it into a, a collet block, a square collet block and I milled it square. Now this is all going to be longer than what it needs to be then I put it in a, the lathe and I turned the diameter here to uh, 0.125 now this is going to be cut off of course and cut off over here and then be but before I cut it off I will harden and temper it while it's still on a piece that's long enough for me to handle so I'm going to set this up now in the square collet block now you can use uh, di different types of indexing devices, uh, your spin index or a dividing head to do the same, but I prefer this little collet block with a quarter, quarter inch collet in it and I will just rotate that four times in the Bridgeport mill and uh, mill that square and that will be a very simple and quick operation. This is quarter inch water hardening drill rod and I tightened it and now I'm going to step over to the bridge port. I'm not even doing any layout because I know about where I want the square to be and there'll be excess material. Now I will take four cuts so I brought the collet block out so it's just flush with the edge of the vise and that's not too critical but to get my depth I uh, had the uh, table lowered and I turned the machine on and brought the cutter down to the Till it just touched the work and then I raised the table up 1 16th of an inch I did the math that's 62 thousandths and I'm ready to uh, cut across it and uh, one pass will do even though this is tool steel it's, it uh, cuts pretty nicely with the, a sharp end mill
All right, let's take the first cut. I loosened the vise, rotated the work 90 degrees, bring it back up to the edge of the vise, tighten the vise. And I will do that two more times. This is what it looks like so far. and I've got 120 thousandths on the square. And I need to take my little needle file and get all the burrs off. Small work takes small tools. Then we're ready to put it in the lathe and turn the end down. The work is now held in a quarter inch collet on my atlas lathe and I'm going to turn that end down to 125 thousandths. Right here. This is one noisy lathe. Now I've set the carriage stop so I'll always end my cut at the same distance. And there I hit the stop. This work is very small and flexible so I have to take light cuts. This will take 10 or more passes, but yet only a few minutes. I'm down to about 125, at least near where the square part is. It's a little bit smaller near the end, and that's why the work, the nose piece is, uh, is starting to go on there, but it won't go on all the way. Now I'm ready to trim that to length. All right, it's turned down to a little over 125, so it'll be a press fit. Now the square part is much, much longer than it needs to be. You know, it's not even going to be up to where my fingernail is. Now I've got that in a vice grips. I'm going to heat this water hardening tool seal up red hot with my MAP torch and quench it in a can of water I have here on the bench, and then it will be hot. I heated that to the critical temperature, which is right around 1500 degrees. Now it will be, will be quite hard. Listen to the sound of this now, checked with a file. It's just like running a file over glass. But now it's too hard and too brittle, so I will temper it, bringing it up to about 600 degrees, which is the tempering uh, temperature or the drawing temperature and I'll do that by color also but I'm going to shine it so that I can see the blue color come in I'm not sure this will show up oh yeah it's turning blue and right at that temperature I quench it which is around 600 degrees see the blue color Now I need to cut off the square part, just allow about an eighth of an inch, and I'm going to use my Dremel tool with a little abrasive cutoff wheel, and I need to be careful not to get it overheated where I would uh, take the temper out, and I hope I don't drop the darn thing and lose it on the floor, because it's really going to be small. As you can see, this thing is tiny. It's no bigger than the great emancipator's head. And the square part is still way too long. It needs to be only 45 thousandths, and I will hold it in my pin vise and uh, attempt to uh, reduce it in length on my 2-inch wide abrasive belt. 
I bet I've had uh, this set of pin vices for 20 years and never used them, but now I finally have a use for them. Almost threw them out. But at least I can hold on to the thing without uh, getting my fingers too close to the belt or getting my fingers burnt by holding a hot work. But this will be strictly a freehand operation. But the idea here is to reduce the length of the square part until it is a little bit less than the depth of the keyway on the 5C collet. This is how I'm going to hold it in order to uh, grind the end of it, just in my little pin vise, trying to hold it square. There it is. All done. That's the old one. You can see it's nothing but a little cylinder. This is ready to install, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then see how the collet fits in there. There it is, pressed in. And I already tried several different collets in there. Looking good. Now look how they made this collet block. It's of course made over the pond, but it's uh, made just a little bit different in that uh, this key is actually a set screw, probably a dog point, I think they call it. But they have a little thicker wall here to deal with. And it's just round on this side. It still seems to do the job. but it does look like they half stepped. Okay, some time has lapsed and uh, this is the other one. Notice it's a little bit uh, rustier or stained and I've got that one done too. Now perhaps you have uh, one to repair on your lathe but these are ready to go into service. You know what I was just thinking? We often complain about the cost of repair parts and if this part was available, and I doubt that it is, I'm sure it would be $25 and we would all say, oh, how can they get that for the little part? But uh, when I think about it, if that part was $50 and I was able to buy it and just slip it in there, it would have been a bargain. Yes, they would have had a setup to make that, and they would have made a hundred of them in a rather short period of time, but they sit on the shelf for 25 years before they sell all of them. Now this is the collet adapter, or nose piece, for my Atlas lathe, and it holds 3C collets. It's almost new and in very good condition, but that was made with a square key round on one side, one end, and square on the other. So that looks like it's pretty well made. Okay, I hope this was helpful. This is Tubal Cain signing out saying so long for now. Be sure and watch my many other videos.